Good morning. So today we're going to kind of show you our next little step or adventure in this whole farmsteading, homesteading journey we're doing. Uh, trying to become a little more self-sufficient. Also have a little bit better food. We've talked to friends and family and those that have kind of stopped canning or had more than they needed. Gave us a bunch of different canning supplies. We have purchased some of our own. We're waiting on some lids from Amazon. So anybody who do, does do canning or has looked into it knows that the lids are near impossible to find right now anywhere. Uh, so we got a big old pile of jars. We did buy our own turkey fryer because the last time we were borrowing one, wife got some reading material. We're also using the turkey fryer right now as our uh, form of boiling because the only thing we, as you no, we do not have a kitchen yet. And so my little hot plate will not boil the cans um, long enough or hot enough. We to need to have a, another form. And so turkey fryers is the way we decided to go. I loved it when we did our um, putting up the corn. Yeah, when we froze the corn, it yeah. worked really well. It worked really, really well. And I'm no longer afraid of it. So uh, we'll go with that. Yeah. So the other thing, another one of our purchases was... Uh, we did get some microphones. We noticed our videos, the sound was terrible. So we're hoping it's a little better this time. I mean, yeah, last night we did a little spending spree, went into town and... We were only supposed to be getting canning and yeah. preserving things. So... And oh. other uh, items came into the cart. Yeah, so we'll take you, take you on a little tour to show you some of our impulse purchases also. As we was heading into Home Depot yesterday... They had trees on sale. They had several different fruit trees and some other trees. So, so we picked up another peach and a plum. We have a wild plum. We thought maybe regular plums would be nice. And we already do have a peach tree, but a second one sure isn't going to hurt nothing. Uh, we also this, lost an apple. Yeah, one of our apple trees got broke off, but they didn't have any apple. Mm -mm. Hopefully it'll come back, but it'll probably be several years now till it actually produces where we was kind of hoping maybe you get some fruit next year it's gonna be pretty nubby if it is yeah <laughs> we thought more more fruit trees would never hurt nothing and for 40 bucks can't yeah they were 40 bucks a piece but then i guess right before for tractor or home depot was our trip to tractor supply and our local tractor supply we kind of got into a town a little ways away and our local tra our local tractor supply hasn't had chickens or ducks for months. Uh -uh. Hi, babies! But... Hi, baby! That tractor supply had chickens and ducks. And if you've watched some of our past videos, you know we've lost six now. We've lost four to a coyote, one to a hawk, and one to some sort of sickness. So we yes, picked Veronica. up... We picked up eight eight new chicks four ducks and four uh four chicks i don't remember what the chicks are uh we're really hoping i'd like i'd like to get some more ma uh, female ducks right now our ratio is two to two look at these little guys they were pretty adorable i don't know what our chances of getting hey hey hey, hey you're gonna scare them don't know what the chances of getting all you females get are. No, but no, no, no. I would really like to be able to get more duck eggs. Because we're only getting about one, two a day. Because yeah. we only have two females. No. One of the PJ. ladies is probably like, can I get some privacy here? PJ, get out. She's like, I'm trying to do something. These kittens are very kittenish. Oh, I didn't see uh, Becky was in yeah, there. I think it's Becky's in, Becky's in there doing her business. She's probably like, I, this is so embarrassing. I think Veronica's yelling at her to get out of her spot, too. Yeah, they all seem to like that one spot. We are going to lower the, we're going to lower the uh, nesting boxes today because I don't think they really like the height. And we were just kind of guessing at it. Also, too, you want to talk about um, the heating for a lot of them that may not know. They have heat lamps, but then this is also a warming. <laughs> Lucky. Uh, Cat just about fell down. Into my kit or into the. Um, yeah, we have a, a brood plate. That's 
heats from the bottom and so they can go under and it's more like their mother big thing about it is it's a lot safer than the heat lamps uh i mean it is it has been getting up in the 80s or 90s during the day but it's actually about 60 this morning so yeah we figure they need a little supplement heat for the for the heat, night yeah the nights baby chicks are actually supposed to be at 100 to 110 degrees the first week the first week and i these guys are pretty small yeah they they must be they must be pretty and young. they're sitting underneath that brooder pretty good so but look at them jay they're eating so good we got two gray ones two gray chickens and then two more i think they're going to end up looking like becky yeah fairly similar they're a reddish the gray ones i don't rem they're ones are easter eggers and the others are olive eggers look at lucky <laughs> uh they didn't really have a particular breed that they said they were uh the two of the 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 yellow chicks are supposed to be females for sure and the gray ones were straight runs and so were the ducks which means you don't know what you're yeah, gonna get straight runs are just yeah Stay away it's all the chickens no so we don't know what sex we're just hoping and we only have one rooster currently and it's actually a silky so it's a bantam pj so i'm not sure that he's much of a rooster for these did you see so oh my god okay we got it yeah throw them out um pj is trying to get into the baby chickens and lucky is trying to get up at the um at becky and none of them are wanting to have anything to do with it all right you two, get i out. don't really like them coming in the coop get out this is our coop uh this doesn't normally sit there because but we're covering the chicks so that the Kittens can't get in. Kittens them. and the, the adult chickens can't get in. They're not really adult chickens either. They're only about six months old. This is our nesting bar. It's, are they eight foot wide? I think so. About eight foot. But the one thing we did that, I don't know, I think it maybe is kind of clever, is that you can come over here and we can just lift this up. We'll chain it up there when we go to scoop out the uh, when we go to scoop out the litter later. We're using what they call a deep litter method. We just kind of keep add more pine shavings whenever it gets too nasty. The chickens root around in it, and then it's supposed to in the winter. You know, since it's actually technically composting. It, it builds heat there so in the winter it'll actually help keep the chickens a little warmer in the winter and then come spring early spring what we'll do is we'll scoop all this out and we'll actually throw it in the garden and then that'll be and cats that'll be have, compost for the garden the cats have found pj the cats have found uh, the other way of getting into the coop. And so PJ, now that we threw him out the front door, he will run all the way around to the coop, to the back door, and come in that way to get to him. I don't think he wants to hurt him. I think he probably no, he just, just wants to yeah, just see cute. what's going on in there. But, but that's they, why we have the screen over the top, is just to kind of keep, because look at that. Gosh, there he is again. Yeah. I don't know if... PJ. They don't bother the chickens. No, they don't. And actually, the chickens, when they do start bothering them, they'll just start pecking them, and then the kittens yeah. run away and stuff. So, But I don't know if PJ... I, there's no way he's thinking that he's going to hurt them and stuff. He probably just wants, is curious about yeah, what Yeah, I'm it sure is. he's just curious. And, it's just and also, there's food in there, too, that he can get to as well. Yeah. So if he thinks he's starving all the time. So... What, PJ? Oh, what, yeah, that poor thing. Yep, that poor thing. Jay just loves those poor things. All right. No, all right. Sorry, back to your stuff. Well, and then we actually put in an automatic door. Uh, a lot of that was for if we go camp and go on vacation trips or if we're gone, it lets them out and then it shuts. Most of the girls are pretty good about getting in at night. Kateri's uh, even learned to come yeah. in and stuff. She was roosting on the tops of the 
tarps yeah. that we had out there, but she's getting in. Yeah, we have the we have the light on a timer, and it's we try to keep it on about a half hour, forty five minutes after sunset, so that as it as the sun goes down, the chickens can know where you know they can see their coop lit up still, and they can kind of seems to help them get in at night. Then we have it kick on about sunrise, maybe a little earlier, just to give them some more sunlight, hopefully up the egg production a little bit. But yeah, the automatic door's nice. That one, I wish I'd have bought the timer one. That one's a photo sensor model. And it's okay, it works. But I wish I just, I, I wish it was just shutting and opening and shutting at a certain time. We're still dealing with a kitten over here. He keeps so, jumping up there. Good morning, Miss Kateri. There's Kateri. She seems to be fairly well integrated into the flock. Oh, babies. Come here. She, she kind of holds her own. She doesn't seem to be terribly social with the other ones. Oh, baby. But she's, you know, she's in the coop at night. And, and that, she's starting to move her leg forward yeah she doesn't use it yet but it looks like she's getting better <laughs> here's our run for our chickens we do have two of these little giant automatic waters i do like those and then we have a uh, grandpa's feeders feeder i do like that the chicken stand on it opens it up so uh rodents and stuff can't pests can't get into the feed we don't actually seem to go through very much feed i suppose because they free range most of the time the milo from the their scratch grew so we just let it morning ladies are you getting all the good and bugs out of there there's our four ducks we currently have reuben's a girl that's less He's not a girl. Ming Ming, not a girl. And lots of. And those are our four ducks. So far, we've been all right having two drakes. I do think it's a little hard on the ladies right now. They don't seem too worse for wear. And they haven't tried mating with the chickens yet. At least we don't think. We thought that there was that one time, but I oh, think it was more them just pushing being them out of the water. Yeah, yeah. just bullies. But yeah, as soon as, uh, if we end up having a problem, we'll end up sending the two males to freezer camp. <laughs> I need to Google also when we're going to do potatoes. I think we're supposed to be doing potatoes soon. Yeah, somebody said it was based on when you actually plant them it's like so many days after you plant them well we have no idea when we actually planted them i also read though that you're supposed to wait till the tops of them start dying off well those do not look like they're going to die off well yeah but we'll google that yeah there's our potatoes and weeds i say the weeds have won hopefully next good. year we'll do better So what are we making now, baby? Uh, now I'm making my refrigerator pickles. And how did you find this recipe? YouTube. <laughs> YouTube or Google? YouTube. The lady was making hers. Um, and then I wrote it down because there was three ways to do cucumbers. And wrote this one down and then I Googled it. And now we're going to see what happens. You say your mom used to make this? Mom used to make this. But I never paid attention when mom was making it and stuff. I was like, but I do remember having refrigerator pickles when I was a little kid. I also, the other thing I remember a lot as a kid is the cinnamon spear pickles, which you said you've never had or you hate. Uh, but well, we had, we had cinnamon pickles, but you called them something else last night. Yeah, they're cucumber pick or um, watermelon pickles. So this, I bought this at a craft fair a couple of last year last year's christmas craft fair um and it's the watermelon rinds but they're the cinnamon pickles and stuff and so this is one thing that i really want to learn how to make but we definitely i didn't have any watermelons from our plants and so 
Oh, they actually use watermelon rinds? Yeah, that's the watermelon rind, the white part of it and stuff. And so I haven't Googled how to cook that, how to do that, how anything, but that is definitely a bucket list for me is learning how to do that because the kids have really fond memories of those as well because grandma used to, my grandmother, their great grandmother, used to make them and I had them all the time. So grandma made them though in the circle um, they look like apple slices, flat apple slices and stuff, which fit perfectly into this thing. So Pat does hers a little bit different. She just does them in chunks, but so yeah. So my understanding, like I said, I just wrote down everything from their YouTube video. It's one cup of vinegar, apple cider vinegar, which smells, and then one, sorry, two cups apple cider vinegar, two cups water, equal amounts. And then it's three cucumbers peeled and a Vidalia onion. And then um, when this starts boiling, I'll put the half cup sugar in there and then we'll let that cool down. And I'll cut and do all the other stuff. You put it in the jars and then there's dill in there as well. So my Vidalia onion I got from um, the Lions Club or somebody. I can't remember. We got 10 pounds of them. I think they were in the fridge too long because mine's pretty soft. So um, we are going to... See it looks all right if I can still use that but um they said preferred Vidalia onions because it was sweeter but you can use anything and we have our own onions out in the laundry room that are drying right now so I figured if I if these were too soft I would use our own so then it'd be our own cucumbers and our own onions but we will see just gonna prepare everything and then we'll let you know how it tastes because then you're supposed to let it sit overnight in the refrigerator you can't actually eat it right away yeah you got everything cut up and you boiled your vinegar water mix vinegar water and then once it boiled i added the sugar sugar yep you got your cucumbers and your dill and your Vidalia onions. And your Vidalia onions in your jars. Yep. I'm already tweaking, tweaking the recipe because when he made it on YouTube, they just made like they made one of these, and so um, I upped it because to do all that for one is kind of stupid. And since I have us, Jalen, and Adam, um, I wanted to make sure that all of us taste it. So yes. So hopefully it turns out. But after that comes to a boil, it says you're supposed to let it cool down, um, which is not cool yet, and then put it in there and then just refrigerate overnight before you can start eating them. The longer you let them sit though, the better it is um, that they soak up everything. And how cool, is it supposed to be cool or? No, just warm. But I literally just took it off of the, just... off the hot plate and stuff. And so it, as you can tell, you can see the steam and stuff. And so I think it's so it doesn't actually cook the cucumbers and onions in there and stuff. That makes sense. So just, so it's warm to the touch and then I'll put it in there, so. The rest of the stuff I wanna do later on is all going to be uh, the tomato stuff. And so, as you can tell, we have a lot of room, not too much time to do stuff. So now that it's cool, adding the mixture, looks like we don't have quite enough vinegar sugar water to fill all our jars lesson learned there like wrapping the peers all right careful you spilled some on the counter don't I didn't want you to get your See, that's what you get for doing it YouTube and just writing the information down. But well, it's all gonna be a learning process for us to tweak the recipes how we like them and yeah. to make the amounts we want. Yeah, the biggest thing also too is, I don't know, I feel like there's a lot of wasted stuff like when you're making all of it, you know, that everything isn't perfect sizes for everything, you know? So it's like I have, obviously that was a mess up on that part, but well, it's not like we have a shortage of cucumbers or tomatoes or anything like that right now. Or onions or, yeah, exactly. But it's always discouraging that when you have your first couple times and it doesn't go the way it's supposed to and stuff. But this did say, when he made it, it did only make two, or he made 
one large, and I thought it was a half gallon jar, but I don't, I don't remember. I need to take better notes next time, but that's it. Literally slice up the cucumber, slice up the onions. You boil the water, the vinegar, the sugar, and then you put the dill in there and then you dump it on there and then you put the lid on and you refrigerate it for 24 hours. That's why they're called refrigerator pickles. Um, and then you can eat them. No canning needed. But I also assume they wouldn't preserve like a standard canned pickle. Yeah, I don't you know, know how long you... this would stay in there. Yeah. I'd assume you can't sit there and keep like, it for years like you can a pickle. Yeah. That, again, they didn't say how long there's normally in there. I think the thing is, though, this is a way to eat them probably within a couple months. Yeah. And if your family likes them and stuff, where... This is going to be a lot of pickles just for me. Jalen might be able to eat that many in one month, um, one or two months. But uh, like like you said, it's a learning curve. We'll see if we if we like it, what we do with it, how we tweak it. You know, if I only make, there's got to be a way to preserve that for longer. I mean, I think our refrigerator pickles sat in there forever. Maybe they can. I don't know. Um, but where the canning, you know, you boil it to to kill anything and then seal it. Yeah. This is but you open it back up and put it in the fridge. What's that? When you can it? Yeah, like whatever you're using. But then you have to use it by a certain time. Yeah. I'll Google how long these can stay in there. I'm assuming that vinegar is probably going to preserve it for a long time. So there's recipe number two of the day. This is our harvest from yesterday this basket or was from the day or two ago and then the baskets and the green and the other one were just from the other night the problem is is we have so many cherry tomatoes right now and i haven't found a way of actually preserving those i don't know if that's just kind of like a freezer throw them in a bag and freeze them but i am not peeling and coring all of these to make uh paste and sauce and stuff but we are starting to get some of our larger ones our beef eaters which makes me super super happy now we're on to a tomato sauce, spaghetti sauce. Tomato. Just a tomato sauce. And then you're about to use it as a base for any other. Yep. For a pasta or yep. um, pizza. Obviously, since we're I'm 100% brand new to this, I Google and YouTube and everything. And the one of the ladies that I was watching made perfect sense. She's like, she goes, why pigeonhole yourself? She goes into a specific sauce. Um, when you can make the process all your tomatoes at one time, it's a lot quicker and easier and then change it to how you want it. So if you want pizza sauce, you can add the garlic or the oregano or whatever. But if you want an Italian, um, more flavor to it, you can change it there. Cause she said that what she did is she did, she used to run out of one, but have an abundance of the other and stuff. And so, um, I thought that made sense that it was just all tomato sauce is your base and then you season it to how you want it when you're using it. If it doesn't work next year, I'll know not to do it that way. So we're mostly just gonna core and stem the tomatoes? Yes, and I know this is not what you're supposed to be doing with cherry tomatoes, so I understand that people, that they don't normally do this, but I have, this is, Oh, that's not even a tenth of our cherry tomatoes. This, yeah, this is one night of picking cherry tomatoes that I cannot eat all this and I want to try it. So, and there's no difference of me giving this away and not having it or trying something and seeing if it works as well. So, I don't mind the skin on stuff. Jason doesn't mind the skin on stuff. And so, if I can uh, save, if I can actually use most of our harvest instead of giving it all away, um, I'm going to do that. But our big tomatoes haven't started coming in yet. Um, and with those, I would also like to do diced tomatoes. So we, I can make my um, tomato juice for chili in the winter. And then also the diced tomatoes for chili as well. Or any other vegetable stews that um, I find recipes for as well. So um, our eating habits definitely have changed or are going to change. I would really like to not be eating out as much. And so... That's a lot more crock pot recipes and stews and stuff. And so we'll be so healthy next year.
just got done getting the tomatoes in the roaster. Uh, I don't know how many tomatoes that is, quite a few. And then we used about five onions, chopped them with our new Ninja food processor. Man, that, that thing's pretty slick. Yeah. So we also just lied to you because I said in the beginning, like literally 20 minutes ago, that we weren't going to put any seasonings and stuff in it. But we figured that we put onion in everything. And so having the onion be in there wasn't going to be that big of a deal if it's just tomatoes and onions. Then we'd still be able to put the seasoning that we want uh, when we go to use it on whatever sauce we're going to use. Yeah. After a few hours, we've got it simmered down a bunch. We didn't separate the seeds. Oh, that'd be good. She's pulled off a lot of the juice. That'd Don't want good. that to go to waste. Now we're trying to run that through the pure air, the Ninja. That looks like it's gonna work all right. Kind of pulverize the seeds and the skin. If we wanted to, we could have de-skinned it before we put it in there and then you wouldn't have to do that, but. Peeled them? Uh, yeah. So should I put it in something different so I can get everything? Yeah, this will definitely be a lot easier once we get the kitchen done. <laughs> and the new house will definitely have a pretty good sized kitchen in it. Ooh, that looks really good. That's definitely spaghetti sauce. We were a little worried that we might have over onioned it because uh, it was pretty strong smelling. But I actually took a little taste of it and didn't think it was half bad. I'm really happy with the making the pureeing it. Yeah, I don't see any reason why we'd have to spend the extra hour and a half of you know, skinning, skinning it, and it, getting the seeds out. I guess all that matters is if we're happy with it. Next, after this, uh, we will boil it down still. Get it thickened up a little bit more. Um, I did buy some cheats. We do have some tomato paste in the cupboard. If I don't feel like boiling it down for another couple hours. Um, well, the big thing is we're gonna kind of run into a crunch of time to where we're we're not ready to can it yet, but it's, so we probably just let it simmer for a we long ready time. To can it yet? Well, I'm gonna see if it's gonna take another couple hours to. It's only four. Uh, that's true. So the other test, it said that if you can put an X in it, or yeah. if you can write in it and it doesn't go back, that that's the perfect consistency. Yeah. yeah, I can't smell the onion at all anymore now. I didn't taste a whole lot of it when I took that taste. I mean, it tasted fine. It tasted kind of like a pasta sauce without a lot of seasoning, kind of a... Mm -hmm. Which is exactly what it is. Probably a Dollar General pasta sauce. Thanks for the vote of confidence. No, you haven't <laughs> seasoned it at all. You have a spatula somewhere? 
thought we had one. Well, that's what we did too, but we might have gotten into the turkey. So now it says all I need to do is kind of bring that back up to a boil. And probably simmer it for a couple hours till it's kind of consistency. Yep. Actually, I think the consistency is really good. We could probably, actually, if you wanted to, mm. all they say is make sure that it's, that you when you're writing little, it. You don't think it'd want a little thicker? I mean, we can try it for a half hour to an hour, but I think probably we'll be canning here. Yeah. So maybe just let it simmer. We'll start setting up the yep. fryer. I'll turn it up a little and. We'll go from there. We're gonna try and get the tomato juice put up yet tonight. Uh, we got, we think we got about four quarts of it. We skimmed it off the top of the tomato base, I guess is basically what we're calling it. Uh, it's kind of, kind of got a mess going on here. To be ever so polite. Yeah, just judging by our house, it's a disaster. Oh, I think it's, it's also quarter till not. Yeah, eight. we started at eight. Yeah. In the morning. Well, we haven't been working on it full time doing this. I mean, we've done other things. One thing, it will make a big difference when we get an actual stove and dishwasher, so we can sterilize. And sterilize the jars in the dishwasher. You kind of have everything ready all at once. As it is now, we're actually using the, the turkey fryer outside to try and do this. Yeah, why we decided to do this without a real kitchen is beyond me. But hey, you know what? They did it that way, the Pioneer way. No, I think they just died of botulism. <laughs> Still a possibility for us as well. <laughs> we thought it would work a lot better, but it's not working that great. So hopefully the rest will wait a few weeks until we can get the kitchen finished. So we're hoping to have it done in a couple weeks. We're actually taking a week off from work to work on it. So you use that instead of lemon juice or yeah. and lemon juice? I could use this or lemon juice. So this is the half a teaspoon for a quart size jar. Said, so, or you could use two tablespoons of lemon juice. Okay, these new turkey fryers have like a dozen safety features on them. It is incredibly irritating. <laughs> and we knew that when we bought it. Yeah, but you can't buy them without it anymore. That we was did, pretty good timing. We did a little Google and it looks like we can uh, bypass that feature. So that'll be one thing that happens shortly. That was pretty good timing though. Ta-da! Ding! Uh, so, what, 40 minutes now? Yeah, now we sit and let for 40 minutes. What to do for 40 minutes? What to do? 
So what we found to do for 40 minutes was do the dishes in the bathtub. I will have to say I will not miss this when we get the kitchen done. And now it's currently dark. We got our 40 minutes. My wife's pulling the, this is tomato juice out. Oh, so I shut that door. And I guess she was going right back in there. Guess we should have got on the same page. It's boiling in there, so hopefully that means we did it right. It's a pretty good question. <laughs> We're gonna Google that later. <laughs> So if I die from botulism, somebody at least set up a GoFundMe for my wife. So there they are. Four jars of tomato juice. Tomato juice. We will use these for like to make chili and stuff like that come winter, spring, whenever we want chili. Yep. Instead That's pretty much the only thing I know what to use it for. So. Yeah. So how was the experience today, honey? I was Googling if they're supposed to be boiling like that. Yeah. I have no idea. I don't know why it would hurt. Yeah, maybe we should have called it Google Farms. I bet you somebody to come after us with a trademark on that oh, one. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> um, it was good. In order to actually sterilize jars. Yes, I know that. I'll look at it later. Because um, look at that. Those. I would assume that's what they're Well, it's almost going to have to boil. If you're going to have it in boiling water for 40 minutes, yeah, I would how do you, how's it not going to boil? I could see maybe if it was something else. Yeah. I'm waiting for the pop. Uh, the pop's when it starts to cool, and it's pretty freaking hot. So, uh, it will be a better experience when we have a kitchen. And I think now that we, we have most of our supplies, and we kind of know how to do it a little bit, the dishwasher will make a big difference because we can sterilize. Yes. Because these, the jars are supposed to be hot before you put everything in it. And then obviously you have to sterilize the lids and stuff. Um, and just, you know, like we have this big of counter space. So trying to do the tomatoes and um, just trying to do everything and stuff. But you know what? In the old days when the pioneers were doing it, <laughs> this was way better than they had. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe. I always died to dysentery on the Oregon Trail. So it may be totally redneck by doing our turkey fryer and. Uh, having it this way, but I have food for winter, so not very much. Not yet. We did decide though to put the spaghetti or not, sorry, spaghetti, the tomato sauce in the fridge and do that tomorrow because it is almost nine o'clock now. And we'd still have to sterilize the jars, which is a 20 minute process, um, and then put the food, warm up the um, sauce, and then put it back in there, and then. Uh, boil it I think for 35 minutes is that all it is is it less with the it's spaghetti less, yeah because the they're smaller jars oh because those are pints those instead of cores. Pint jars, yeah and we can only what we say we can only get seven pint jars in there yeah. and I think we'll I don't know if we'll even have seven out yeah. of that that cooked down pretty that it did cook down, down quite a bit so um because it was a whole roaster full and it barely was you know yeah so that was that so, was crazy so, so we'll finish getting them canned tomorrow we'll finish canning the tomato tomorrow, sauce sure. Tomorrow after church. Yep. Hello. Now we're back. Day two of our canning. Almost a fiasco, I'd say, but it's not too bad. We're, we ran out of time last night to get the, we're calling it tomato base canned. It was just getting late. We were not going to stay up for another two hours dealing with it. And so we're back at it today. We have warmed our tomato base back up in a pot, sterilized our jars in our boiling, our water bath for 10 minutes. 
Now she's adding the citric acid. And then we'll fill, see what we get for jars, how many jars we get of our tomato base. And what we'll use this for later is if we want to make spaghetti sauce, pizza sauce, anything like that. This is by no means a tutorial of how to do this. Yes. We're, we're, this, it's almost a cautionary tale more yeah. than a... Everything we do on this homestead is just to inform people of what it is we're doing since we've been told gazillion times that people will know what it is we've been doing. So yeah. no way, shape, or form is this the right way to do it. And we will find out uh, after we open these if they're even edible. Yeah. We're learning as we go. We think we're, we're starting to get a little bit of a system, learning how to do things. You know, we we have never canned before. I remember my mom making pickles when I was younger. I don't know as though she canned a whole lot. I do like that um, your mom gave us those cans and stuff. And so she still had her some of her stuff that was on there. And so the two that I found was uh, Relish, uh, made in August of 1990. And then I think it was Sweet Pickles, too. So it was your mom's handwriting um, on it. And I thought that was kind of cute. 1990? She yeah. was still doing it that late? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you would have been a freshman? Uh, freshman, sophomore. Yeah. It was relish, and I think probably because you probably had a ton of cucumbers. But Yeah, yeah Grandpa used to plant a really big garden. That one might be. All right, it is currently 1239. There you go. Okay. So 1240. So if it's got to be in for. I'll go double check to see how much longer it's got to be in. Got our seven cans of. Tomato sauce. Tomato base, tomato sauce. Out of our canner, out of the water bath. They've been boiling for about. 35 minutes and then we let them cool for another five now we'll let them sit here i guess we're not supposed to touch them for 12 to 24 hours yes jason that means stop pushing the tops of them down but yeah they seem to be some of them are boiling on the inside they're moving so we'll see and i say You'll know for you'll pretty much know for sure when you open them up if you did something wrong and it's spoiled. There you go, peeps. That's our weekend. Except for now, we still get to go plant trees. And then we gotta plant the two trees. Yep. Go handle the new chicks and ducks a little bit more. Yeah. We're gonna try and have those be a little tamer than what the other ones yes. are. Much tamer. I mean, they're not pets, but it'd be nice to be able to have a little bit nicer chickens and ducks. Yep. We now have our peach and plum tree our tree you can keep going um little rings we got our poop water which is from the duck pond that's got to be the good stuff to make everything grow good right and now we're going to go out to the orchard and plant our trees
got our two new trees planted. And then we've had these rings for a little while. I just haven't had a chance to get to them. Other things have been more of a priority. So we put them on the two new ones. They're just like a plastic ring that holds the mulch. And then I'm hoping that'll do a better job of keeping the weeds away from the trunk. One thing I don't really like about them so much is that it looks like the mulch gets right around the trunk. So I worry a little bit about the trunks rotting. So I, my understanding is you don't want to bury the trunks in mulch. But those are two new trees. This is the plum. We kind of planted it here because the wild plum is about, I don't know, 40 feet to the north of this one. So we thought as far as, far as pollination goes, that's going to be our best bet. Because plums, you are supposed to have at least two for pollination. And then that's our peach. This is our original peach. Yeah, that one's a dwarf. I'm not sure if that, I don't think that one's a dwarf. I'm not sure. Like I say, it was on sale. And then those two there, pears, and then our apples. We went ahead and got the rings on. I had... But I had like 10 of those rings. So we got them on all the fruit trees. And then three of the bushes, we were able to get them around. You see how kind of nice that is. Here's actually one of the bushes that we didn't get to. And we mulched it when we planted them. But you can see the, it's just the weeds just keep coming. The grass, it's weed and the grass. So we'll try and get We'll pick some up maybe later this week and get this done because it looks like it will make a pretty big difference. There's a really pretty tree. So it's not too bad. It's a little windy today. It's a little warm digging, but it's a pretty nice day other than that. So our orchard grew by two today. Hopefully they end up all making it. I don't know what that apple tree that snapped off, how it's going to do. 